Hey everybody, Brian7474 back here again with another classic World of Warcraft guide. Today we're going to be looking at some sweet spots for grinding gold between level 50 and level 60 to help you pay for your epic mount. This is a general guide that will work for all classes or races on either the Alliance or the Horde side, while still attempting to take world PvP into account. This guide mainly focuses on grinding these spots without specific professions or classes but there's still going to be the odd exception where having a profession or being a rogue or a mage may have an advantage. Now, some of the items shown in this video are based on auction house prices, so do make sure you're checking your local auction house before grinding those specific items. I'll try to mention that when applicable. Also, if you're a mage, you'll make more gold by following my mage gold farming video, which you can find in the description below if you haven't watched it yet. I'm also working on dedicated videos for other classes and professions in the future, so keep an eye out for those. As for this video itself, let's finally take a look at these gold farming spots. Our first location for farming is in Northern Felwood, up in the spot shown on the map here, in the center of Iron Tree Woods. Here we're going to be farming these elementals called Toxic Horrors. Our first spot today is one of the least popular spots based on hours of testing. It's also a great spot if you're leveling between level 50 and level 60. The main item you're going to be farming here is Essence of Water. So before you head here, you might want to check your local auction house to see how that item is doing. Essence of Water prices vary based on what phase Classic WoW is in. But during almost every phase of Classic WoW, Essence of Water will have a minimum value of 20 to 30 gold per hour based on the different recipes that require it throughout Classic WoW. I actually like this spot for numerous reasons. One is that it's in super close proximity to the Jade Fire Run spot, which we're going to discuss shortly. And it's just one of the lesser popular spots to farm gold in Classic WoW. As stated previously, as long as you're the only one here, and you've checked your auction house and the value is decent, you should make between 20 to 30 gold per hour here, based on the approximately 10% drop rate you're going to get. Be aware, there really is only a 10% drop rate here, so you won't see the item constantly, but you'll see it very often. Luckily these guys do go down pretty easy no matter what class you're using, so you shouldn't have to worry about them hitting too hard very much. Now that we're done talking about these guys, let's take a look at the Jade Fire Run. Just a short run away from this spot is a very popular spot called the Jade Fire Run, just northwest of the Toxic Horrors. Here you're going to be grinding Jade Fire Demons, such as the Jade Fire Tricksters, Jade Fire Betrayers, and Jade Fire Hellcallers. This spot's also going to greatly benefit mana users who will be raiding, so you guys are definitely going to want to check this spot out. These guys drop a ton of valuable loot, such as Felcloth, which is very popular for a few tailoring recipes in the earlier stages of Classic WoW. They also drop Rune Cloth and the odd BOE items that are worth a fair shake themselves. Not only will you be looking at over 35 to 40 gold per hour here, but if you're a mana user, you'll also want to collect Demonic Runes, since you can use these consumables during raids to maximize your DPS. Unfortunately, because of this, and as I've mentioned before, this is a very competitive spot and should only really be engaged if you think you're going to win in a PvP fight. If this spot is being used by more than one person already, you're better off working on Toxic Horrors until someone leaves. But now that we've looked at a super popular spot like the Jade Fire Run, let's go back to looking at a more consistent and less popular spot. In just about the dead center of Stranglethorn Vale, you're going to find a cave called Crystal Vein Mine, which is full of Iron Jaw Basilisks. This is going to be one of the most consistent spots gold-wise, since you'll be making a raw 20 to 25 gold per hour via vendoring alone. If you have skinning and or mining, you'll make even more gold here. The Iron Jaw Crocs will drop 4 great items that are all worthless to other players, but vendor for quite a bit. 
There's the basculus eyes, tails, scales, and hearts, which all vendor for a very pretty penny if sold in bulk. Now those gray drops alone will make you approximately, you know, 25 gold per hour. But you'll also find yourself making a ton of extra gold if you have mining and skinning, since you can also skin these guys for thick or heavy leather, and you can mine iron and mithril here. On top of all the stuff I've already mentioned so far, you also have a very small chance of these guys dropping one of two rare items, the Staff of Jordan and Basilisk Hide Pants. It's extremely unlikely you'll see either item within just a day or two of farming, but after a few days or weeks of farming here, chances are you'll see at least one of these items, which usually auctions for quite a bit, especially when Battlegrounds are introduced to the game. This lower level farm was picked so that players struggling on a PvP server with my other spots have a place where they'll likely see less level 60s to compete with. And honestly, even the weaker grinding classes will have no struggle with these mobs whatsoever. Plus you have that small chance for those sick BOE items. But if you're really feeling these guys are a bit too low level to grind, maybe because you want some experience or higher possible gold per hour, then I have another pretty awesome and consistent spot for you. Our next spot is in this northern area of the Blasted Lands, in the area indicated along this line. You're going to want to stay along the line I've drawn here when considering this map, since it is a literal path surrounded by beasts that you can farm. Now the cool thing about this farm is once again they're beasts, so they're going to yield a consistent drop of greys and white items that you can vendor for a guaranteed amount, assuming there's no competition. But once again, if you bring skinning and mining, you're going to have an advantage, since almost everything here is skinnable, and there's the odd mining nodes in this area. You're going to be farming four or five different mobs here. There's also the odd rare mob here that you may find that will drop you a green BOE item, which might add to the gold per hour. Now you could start leveling here at level 45, but I'd highly recommend farming here closer to level 60 since you might run other level 60s here, as this is a good spot for getting raid consumables. The first mob we're going to be taking a look at is the Scorpox Stingers, which drop multiple grey items that you can vendor. But they also drop Scorpox Pincers, which will sell for a decent amount on the auction house in any server, due to the requirements for raiding consumables, which are obtained in the Blasted Lands via a quest. Next on this list is the Black Slayers, which once again have a guarantee to drop some grey vendor trash, but will also drop gizzards and giant eggs, which you're going to want to auction off since they're also used for raiding consumables. You can also kill these starving snicker fangs, which are the hyena mobs, while you're here. They mainly drop more raiding consumable ingredients called snicker fang jowls. You can skin them, but other than that, they're not the best mob to focus on in this area since the other guys drop more grey items that you can vendor, while also farming the AH materials. Speaking of great mobs to farm, last but not least is these redstone basilisks. These guys once again drop grey trash that can be vendored, but the basilisk brains are going to be the real money makers on the auction house here, as they're also used for raiding consumables, and they stack in large quantities of 20. Just by grinding these four mobs alone on this path, even with another player here, you're looking at about 30 to 40 gold per hour just from vendor drops and auction house sales. These auction house items are going to be needed throughout the entirety of WoW Classic's lifespan, so these shouldn't ever go down in value, and if anything, they should go up in value in a heavily populated server with a good economy. There's two last spots I'm going to show you. But in these last two spots, you're going to be farming the same item off basically the same mobs and you'll be playing the lottery when farming in these spots. Take this into consideration and once again check your auction house to see the value of gold and pearls on your server before you even try these spots. These spots will also benefit rogues since you can pickpocket or mages because they can AoE farm here. 
For example, in my server golden pearls were selling for about 50 gold each just a week ago. But another commenter on one of my videos told me that lately golden pearls on their server is selling for just 10 gold on the auction house. And if they're only selling for 10 gold in your server, they are not worth farming. I repeat, if these are going for less than like 40 gold per item, don't even bother trying to farm golden pearls. It's all luck based and it's based on a very low drop chance. If you pay close attention to the clip I just played on the screen, you'll see I was opening 100 clams and I got 2 golden pearls out of those 100 clams. Since in my server these are selling at 50 gold each, I made 100 gold with about an hour of work. That being said, you could farm for 4 hours and only get 1 golden pearl. Or the golden pearls in your server are only worth 10 gold each, and then you just spend an hour making 20 gold. So check your auction house before you farm these, very important. The first spot that you can farm these bad boys at is one I've shown in a previous video, the Hatecrest Nagas, just south of Feathermoon Stronghold in Feralus. Just past the beach, you can head into this cave, which has tons of Hatecrest Nagas with a very quick respawn rate. You can kill just piles of these guys and constantly get big mouth clam drops, which will give you mostly crap other than the golden pearls, which are going to be the big focus here, assuming they're selling well on your server. Technically speaking, you can begin to farm here at between the level 46 to 52 range, but chances are nowadays you're going to see some level 60 competition here. If not, feel free to farm here and continue to get XP, but since level 60s are now plaguing the area in my PvP server, I'd recommend coming at level 60 and being geared for a fight. Now you're probably going to get the biggest gold output here as a mage, but other than that there's not too much to say about this spot. Without golden pearl drops you're not making much gold since they drop a minor amount of silver and some trash that you can vendor once in a while, with the odd BOE maybe if you're lucky. To me it's a complete gamble of a farm spot, so I don't usually recommend it if you want consistency. On the flip side, if you find the spot is always taken and you really want to go for those golden pearls, you can also farm big mouth clams off of Spite Lash Nagas. Spite Lash Nagas can be found in the southeast area of Ashara on the upper level of this sort of cliffside. These guys you're definitely going to want to farm in the high 50s or ideally level 60 since you're going to have more competition here and they're kind of tougher mobs to face in groups. I found these guys drop clams more frequently, probably to compensate for the tougher difficulty killing them. You can also pickpocket them if you're a rogue, or once again you may even be able to AoE farm these guys if you're a mage. But I haven't personally tried AoE farming here, so I'm not sure what the gold output is like with that. A big issue you're probably going to find here is that there's more level 60s competing here than for the Hatecrass Nagas, and on some servers you're going to be correct. These guys tend to have more players willing to PvP nearby, but if you can clear the area, then it is another great place to farm for big mouth clams to get those golden pearls. These two spots are great if you're the kind of player who likes to go for the lucky, big random drops. For my next gold making video, I'm going to be listening to your ideas for the types of places you want to see me farm. So let me know in the comments below what kind of farms you want to see. Would you like to see more spots based off of a single lucky drop, like this? Or would you rather a private farming spot in like a dungeon or a raid which is a bit more consistent? Or would you rather more world spots like the ones shown in this video? I can certainly make a part 3 to this video that shows more great places to farm gold in the world if you're interested. So comment below if you want a part 3 to gold farming, like this video, or if you'd rather I show a profession training guide or maybe a class training guide next. If you liked the video, make sure you do press the like button and let me know below if there was anything I missed. If you have any questions about any of the spots shown in the video, feel free to ask below. I always try to answer questions as soon as possible. Thanks again to those of you that like my videos and are sharing with your guildmates. I really appreciate the attention my videos have been getting, and I'm so happy that I can help you guys out. I'll be addressing specific classes and professions soon by the way, so if you've got a class or profession you want me to focus on first, let me know. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, see you later.
Cowabunga!